Hi, I'm Scott Gardner. I'm the general manager of the Embedded Vision Alliance. And I'd like to welcome the EVA community to a conversation we're having with Joe Mallet from Xilinx. And Joe is a Xilinx senior marketing manager who has been the champion of the Embedded Vision products at Xilinx. And so, Joe, uh, perhaps you could start our conversation by describing how you got started in vision and really what you saw happening in this application space. So I actually started in vision many years ago. Um, the first products I was working on were the old displays, um, moving all the way through digital and still cameras, and then um, coming through to Xilinx, I was working in the industrial marketing space. We have a lot of vision products within the industrial space for Xilinx. Um, those types of applications tend to be in the surveillance, the video conferencing, and the machine vision space. So these are design wins you already have, places that are already buying Xilinx products. Yes, that's okay. correct. So the, the uh, Xilinx has a very large focus in that area, as well as um, installed base of customers in the industrial vision space. So when did that start? How many years have you been seeing people using Xilinx products and security cameras and these industrial inspection devices you're talking about? So it's actually been happening for a very long time. My focus uh, on the industrial space started about three years ago. Okay. And when I took over that space, I started looking at what do my customers require. There had been a shift in the industry about 2000-ish, uh, 2001, where many of the customers, because it's a tight design cycles, um, you know, shorter development budgets, um, I'm sorry, smaller development budgets. So that meant an ecosystem of IP, so Xilinx had to learn tools. about vision and build all of the collateral that goes around it, the software and the white papers and so on? That's correct. That's correct. So we actually b uh, built out a platform strategy that um, pulls all the pieces together for the customers from uh, embedded IP, um, software, tools. And you provide this silicon. free of charge to all the customers to go build products with? Uh, yes, it is, it is free, of free of charge. Uh, yeah. Uh, it comes with, so the reference designs and things like that for customers to get started with come mm -hmm. with the boards and the platform. Um, and in the vertical space, I was focused really on uh, making sure to provide the market level solutions to okay. the customers. So we take the things that are done more horizontally or more generically at the horizontal level and turn them into more vertical applications and, and more focused. So. So what have you seen happen now? So you've been involved in a lot of the strategic decisions, pushing Xilinx along towards the market opportunities you've identified as you've built out this domain expertise. So now Xilinx is starting to make some very large investments in their new Zinc platform that yes. looks like it's tailor-made for these vision applications. So, so what's happening? What's changed? It's, and Xilinx is really getting now behind this after you've plowed all this territory ahead of time? So yeah, Xilinx is looking at it from a, um, you know, a, a, a technology that goes across multiple verticals. So um, we have several verticals within Xilinx. Um, a majority of those have video or machine vision applications so, in them. So for a vertical would be a market segment like security cameras would be one vertical? So a vertical is a, is a vertical market segment like uh, industrial, scientific, and medical consumer So when broadcasts. you say vertical, you mean all of the products in, that are included in that. So That's the, correct. So uh, the factory automation products, and that includes imaging for what, medical imaging as well, all that? Okay. So let me give you an example for industrial. Mm -hmm. um, w the industrial vertical market segment within Xilinx is focused in several areas. The two key areas are vision and uh, factory automation. Okay. Uh, the factory automation is the traditional factory products. Vision is more the surveillance cameras, um, video conferencing, and machine vision type applications. So when I talk about moving uh, solutions to a market uh, level, I'm talking about being able to focus it for industrial in specific application for something like an IP camera and surveillance. Well, you, so you've talked about some of these places where you've been successful already in some of the security and industrial applications. So one of the things I've been talking to Xilinx about, and they're very excited about, at 28 nanometers, all of a sudden it becomes completely impractical to do an ASIC. I mean, do you think because of this inflection point at 28 nanometers that all of a sudden Xilinx is going to be finding its way into some high volume consumer applications? So 
Xilinx right now is already in the consumer high volume space. So, Can you um, give some examples? yeah, we target uh, or we ship products within uh, high definition televisions, for oh, example. Oh, okay. Um, which is a very high volume market. So, which product family is that? Um, traditionally, it tends to be the Spartan family. Okay. Cost and um, power tend to be care keybouts in the consumer space. Now, is that the same segment? So, the I'll be talking to some more Xilinx folks about the, the Zinc 7000, the EPP, mm -hmm. and I was fascinated to see that you can actually, the low-end devices actually are 2 watts, $15, but still deliver about 58 gigamax. Yes. So that's the kind of uh, target price and power level you'd see in these high-volume markets, you think? I think so, um, and if, if you look at the Zinc line, it actually scales all the way up to um, almost a much tera, higher. Almost a Teramac, I yeah, saw. Exactly, yeah, exactly. That's incredible. Exactly. Yeah. So. Um, so I think the, the higher level applications that might require much more performance um, are still cost competitive okay. and uh, are able to fit in those markets as well. Well, you know, if we have any conversation about computer vision, we quickly get to the Microsoft Connect. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you saw that uh, the Guinness Book of World Records actually recognized the Connect as the fastest growing consumer device in history, mm -hmm. the first to reach 10 million units. I think they shipped 8 million units in 90 days. Mm -hmm. So given that that's you know, in a consumer space, but what are the implications for embedded vision markets? Because a lot of hobbyists have picked this up, and this is now has gotten the fascination of the mainstream. Everybody is now real excited about computer vision. What do you see as the impact of the Connect? Well, it's actually kind of interesting, because if you look back about 10 years, um, what we were doing in imaging at that time was um, was fairly minimal in terms of, uh, in comparison to what we're doing now. For example, you might have a digital still camera that's one megapixel, um, long latencies for uh, processing the image. Um, and if you fast forward 10 years using that same analogy, You've got digital still cameras that are um, professional level cameras. They're shooting right. full video in real time at high frame rates. So the market has actually moved quite a bit as it relates to video. And what, what I see in that space is our applications that we can now address and the things that we can do have moved forward quite, quite drastically as well. Well, and I think the Connect maybe took people by surprise and that this technology is real now. This, all of the stuff is here. It is. It is. It was interesting because now you actually have a fully interactive system that is not only looking at the environment and looking at the people that are interacting with it, but it's making decisions based on that. Mm -hmm. So if you extrapolate that out in time, you might actually see um, you know, products or machines that are um, making decisions based not only on the environment and not only on the, on the um, people that it sees, but it might also have higher level of intelligence that is able to make um, quantitative decisions based on what you've been doing in the past, your history, how, how you've been interacting with the machine or the environment. Mm -hmm. So that's why you need an ARM processor doing this higher level processing at the same time you're doing all of the signal processing for the, for the imaging stuff. Yeah, and they, I think what, what happens is is you're seeing a shift at the same time of there's a lot more embedded content moving out into these camera-based systems um, what that traditionally had been processed on the PC. Right, um, right. And so when you look at the, the extension of that embedded system, you see that the ARM is actually a very good fit there. And then if, in the areas where you need very high performance for DSP-type algorithms, used very heavily in video, the, the fabric is yes. a nice, very nice Excellent. extension. Uh, actually, so you've you talked about uh, Connect took everybody else by surprise, but you've been watching this. What are the other product categories you think we should be watching? What, what, uh, what else is coming that some of our viewers may not have thought about and we should be watching? So that's actually a, that's actually a challenging question. Um, as you start looking at this, you see a a very large wave of video products that has come in in the last 10 years. You've got video on your cell phone, your PC, um, within your house, interacting with your living room. But right behind that, I think, uh, especially starting to see with the Connect system, you're seeing the, the smart video uh, applications come behind that. And the interesting piece is, or the challenging piece in answering that question is, um, what do we do with the technology moving forward and what applications it will see itself in? Um, it could be something along the lines of a casino game um, or 
um, a fully interactive living room system or even house um, mm -hmm. for um, people to be able to, to um, excuse me, a fully interactive house uh, for people to have much easier comfort or living. So yeah, it's almost, almost limitless, right, once you've got the technology in a small embedded product. I guess what I should do for the uh, a last question is get your perspective on the Embedded Vision Alliance itself. I mean, mm -hmm. What do, you, what do you believe is the value of a community like this where we're speaking directly to embedded system designers and helping connect them to the, all of the technology that relates to computer vision that's often been in academia or in government? I mean, from your perspective at Xilinx, now that this community exists and this uh, channel so we can have these conversations, you can speak to the embedded system designers, what do you see as the value of that? We can wrap up with that question. Well, I think the value of the Embedded uh, Alliance is to be able to bring together all the pieces that you just mentioned, the academia, the people making products, the system designers, um, the people that are designing or defining the next generation products, and really getting a chance for people to have an information exchange, know what's possible, and really kind of um, start to think outside of the box in terms of um, what's possible in the next generation video and smart video products. Okay, that's awesome. Well, Joe, thanks, uh, thanks again for talking to us. I'd, I'd really like to encourage everybody at the Embedded Vision Alliance community to give us some feedback and let's continue the conversation at embedded-vision.com. We'd like to hear from you. We'd like to understand about other things you'd like us to discuss and we hope to see you in our next video. Thanks again. Bye.